Hi everybody, it's crazy, it's Monday, and it's time for the FBGE video of the week now. It's the new year, so guess what we get to do? Yep, we get to start with the states. <laughs> so, before I get started, gotta give a shout out to my trusty, cause you guys rock. To my crazy fam, I love you guys. And to my patrons, thank you for your continued support. Now we're up to episode number 46. Um, we left off last week with states, and that's what we're gonna work on today. Let's see. There we go, and that is right here in Ad Actuator. You come down here to State, and that's just right here. And we're going to go into that today. So the State Machine is the game en uh, in the game engine works like a layer system, on which every controller can belong to one or more states. As with the Blender layers, you can have none, one, or multiple states active at a, uh, at one time or at a time if you disable a state you will disable the logic bricks that are exclusively linked to this state's controllers you need a way to change the active states and that uh, and that's what the state actuator is for so this right here makes it to where you can change states okay and let me see here we're going to move over just a little bit so you can see what this is, okay? You got set state, add state, remove state, and change state, okay? And we're going to go into more specifics on that, okay? All right, so the set state, which is the one that comes default, it doesn't default, okay? It says, replace the current state mask entirely with a uh, with the one supply. So when you have it on set state, you're going to set state here, for example, okay and here that's what they show okay so you can set it on either one if you hit shift you can actually do multiple okay the same thing is you know setting up multiple things as well just good old shift okay add state that's this one right here okay and remove state okay are basically synonymous okay not really somewhat synonymous but they are used uh as in good or bad you know so on and so forth okay act on individual states by adding or removing the selected uh, the selected one so if you have add state and you add these and then you have remove state and you remove you know all of them then none of those states would work okay and lastly but not leastly is change state toggle the selected states reversing their values Okay, so when you change state, these will change from these to another one. Okay. States continued. Read more about how to use the states in the state machine section later in this chapter. Okay. Visibility. All right. That's the next one. So we're gonna we're gonna learn more about states later on, uh, about the state machine later on. Okay. But this is just how you can use the actuator, state actuator. What they're talking about, the state machine, is this little guy right here, okay? All right, so the next one we're going to work on is visibility. In, uh, in the physics buttons, you can choose the initial visibility of your object and whether or not it's an excluder object. The visibility actuator allows you to change these properties dynamically during the game okay so let's bring that up that's visibility it's whee, oops you can actually just go up and it'll do the same thing okay it's actually at the bottom of the list <laughs> on this one okay this is your visibility you can have it visible occlusion or children you can have it non-visible non-exclusion and uh, not a child okay so let's see here that that's pretty well point blank you know it's either there or it's not okay it's either occluded or it's not or it is parented or it's not or it's a child of okay so that one's pretty well self-explanatory there really is nothing else you can do with it but click these buttons either on or off it's either true or false okay now we're going to go into the scene okay scene is a kind of nice one i like this one while most of the actuators act on top of the object, the following actuators, Scene, Filter 2D, and the Game Actuator work globally, either per scene or per game. Okay, so we've got, which one is the Filter 2D, 
and game actuator okay these three right here okay yeah they, they, these all work globally per either per scene or per the entire game okay multiple scenes are a common a common way to make a user interface overlay scene handle different levels although let's see yeah although that can be accomplished with multiple blend fi blender files as well okay so you can kind of do the same thing okay you can uh let's see Okay, so the more scenes you have, the more you can use these as well. Like you can add a start game, you can, you know, uh, save and load, so on and so forth with these. You can add, add a filter on uh, all of these. We haven't gotten all the way into those, but the scene one, you can add, you can set a scene, you can set the camera, you can add an overlay scene, which is what a lot of people do when you want to have like a HUD. Okay, HUD is a, basically an overlay scene. Okay, um, you can add a background scene. It's something that happens, you know, that does in the background, so you can not have to fight with it. Uh, you can remove a scene. You can suspend a scene, and you can remove, uh, resume a scene, a scene, scene, not scene. <laughs> that's uh, that's modeling. Okay, so <laughs> all right. So uh, let's see here. Let's see handle. Okay, multiple scenes are a common way to make a user interface overlay scene. Okay, it's kind of like. This little deal right here, an overlay scene. Handle different levels, although that can be accomplished with multiple blend files as well. Or even preload your game assets in the, in the memory, adding scenes and suspending them before effectively switching between scenes. So you can do a lot with the scene actuator. You can actually suspend a scene that, like when you have a cutscene. You don't want to. You don't want your scene to go away, but you want something to come in view of it. Like uh, when you're going into your inventory, you would actually suspend your scene, which would basically pause it, okay? And then you would have your overlay scene, which would be your inventory, and then it would do. You can do stuff in your inventory, but when you clicked off of your inventory, you'd have to get it to go back to resume. So it would go back to the resume scene, um, and you could set them up. Oops. Like that okay so if you hit suspend scene you would actually pick the scene you want i've only got one scene which is just a basic scene so you can't really suspend your only scene you know you can remove it but then you got to find a way to bring it back um but the whole idea is you have more down here like your overlay scene your hud your inventory your uh your uh what do they call them your, your power-ups uh your leveling scene uh, scene so on and so forth Okay, so that way there would, you know, you would have to suspend your main scene, which would be this one, and then you would have another one connected to that for when you hit your inventory, it would overlay a certain scene, your, you know, your inventory scene or your skill scene or your uh, health scene, so on and so forth. All these would be in here, you know, and you would put one in and it would use this one at overlay scene. So that way you can be in it. Okay. Also, um, you know, when you're done and your character exits out, then you've got to resume that scene again. So you have to bring that scene back. Okay? So that's how that, that right there works. The whole knit and caboodle of it is what they're trying to talk about. And I'll switch over here so you can see that as well. Oh, there we go. Okay, so what they're talking about is, see, show UI. Okay, that's your GUI scene. That's an add and overlay scene. Okay, then you're going to do change your camera. So you can set your camera to the camera bird flight. Okay, and then you can see back to menu, which will set scene back to the main menu. Okay, so that does a lot of, a lot of things in one coming off of one strand. So all this does one thing. So when you hit the back, you know, when you want to exit out, you have the exit button. When you hit space bar, for example, or hit back, it will automatically kick this one back to the main menu. Okay, that, that's basically how that works. Okay, multiple scenes are rendered as a stack. The ones in the back, in the back first, followed by the ones on top, the scene actuator allows you to restart your scene, change the current one, add an overlay, 
and background scenes, suspend, resume, and remove them. Also, you can change the current camera of the scene by assigning a new camera object in the set camera option. So, um, like I said, you can use that for when you're doing your inventory or, you know, when a character goes to look at a book. You know, you say, look at book, and it pans, pans to a camera that's actually looking at an open book. You know, it's a pretty good idea for, you know, building games. You know, people don't realize a lot of the stuff you can do with these. Um, you know, having a little bit of Python does help out a lot. Okay, so, freeze, new scene. Stop, hammer time. <laughs> Every time a new scene is set or added, the game engine has to convert all the scene, uh, assets into its internal objects. This is the same process that occurs for your main scene. When you first load up your game, or when you first load up your game, since the game engine is single threaded for most of its operations, the whole game will freeze waiting for the new scene to load. Okay, now there's a way you can actually do that and actually make it to where you, your screen, your scene loads up before your character up. It's, it's what they show as a loading screen. It's an overlay scene. Okay, now let's go into filter 2D. How far are we in? Oh yeah, we're getting close to that. Um, yeah, filter 2D is going to be a long one. Okay, filter 2D is a deep aspect, which is kind of good, but it, it, I can't read that quickly. So, yeah, we might be able to do it in five minutes. You think we could do it in five minutes? Let's try it. Okay, so filter 2D. The filter, let's see, that's this little guy right here. Okay, the filter 2D actuators are post-processing effects applied to the entire screen. Okay, they are similar to what can be done with the composite nodes in the bl in Blender or the filter effects from a graphic software program such as GIMP or Photoshop. Okay, let's see, old graphic card old graphic card support. Okay, filter 2D require graphic card uh, graphics cards with support for GLSL. Officially included in the OpenGL 0.2 or higher, otherwise they will not run and may crash Blender in some cases. Most of today's computers do support it, but you may have trouble running it, running it in some old embedded graphics cards. When not supported, you will see an error report in the Blender console, and it can eventually lead to crashes on Blender. There is no harm for your system. Okay, there won't be no harm to your system. Though, so you, uh, so you, well, so you, if you are not sure, so if you're not sure, okay, of the compatibility of your graphics card, you can go ahead and try it. Okay, so what it's saying is, you know, uh, I'm running a, a newer video card, so I'm not too worried about it, but I've got my old potato, and if I tried to run something, you know, really advanced that I built on my, my big rig, on the rig you're seeing me on right now, um, it, yeah, I would probably go, done. You know, what 2D filters do is help, you know, help a, a lot of the newer ones run faster, but you got to have, you know, OpenGL 2.0 or higher on it. In order for it to work so a lot of old potatoes won't support this so backwards compatibility is an issue um, something you might want to look into on trying to make sure that you can uh, make sure you warn that if you make your game that is less than uh, OpenGL 2.0 or less or less than that okay you may be already familiar with most of the built-in filters they have similar implementation to tra traditional filters found in any digital processing software of course you've got blur everybody loves blur right uh, <laughs> it smudges the whole canvas neighboring pixels are blended together thus existing small details are eventually lost so basically like a dream state you can use the blur on that okay You've got sharpen. Where sharpen? Sharpen. Okay. It's the opposite of blur. The details will jump out of the screen, becoming crystal clear. So, if you got something like you're zooming in, like a like a like a pistol zoom or not pistol zoom, a rifle zoom. Okay, you can actually have that sharpen to a certain point on the screen. 
okay? Dilation. While blur averages neighboring pixels, dilation will pick the brightest maximum R RGB value, one of the one of the surrounding pixels and use it as the pixel color. The result is sharper image but with a loss of details. However, it is a good compromise between blur and sharpen. Okay, so that's distillation, uh, dilation, okay? So what dilation does is you can have certain pixels out here be, you know, kind of faded, but right in here really sharp. So it's that, that drunken stupor that you used to play in GTA, I think it was 4, you know, how it would wave. You can actually blur that image and then put a filter over it that would make it wiggle. So that way your character seems like they're wobbling around and your character falls down. Okay. See, erosion. It works opposite to the dilation method. This filter compares the values of all the neighboring pixels and uses the darker minimum RGB value one as the pixel color. So that was the erosion. There you erosion. There it is. Okay. So this one is going to actually take, it's going to be opposite. You know, it's like something in front of you that's blurring you, but everything else around it is okay. It's going to take the weaker of the, you know, the, the darker value and make it more pronounced. So it's going to blur things up smoothly across the whole thing, which is a nice smooth blur. Okay. Sobble. Okay. Or Sobel. I don't know how you want to pronounce that, but hey, it starts with an S and it will do just fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the scene actuator. And I'm going to go to Sobel and it says, this is another ex uh, simple edge detection formula that detects the spatial frequency of high changes in the image. It will produce images of high contrast with white lines against a solid dark background. Okay. Don't know much about that. If you know more about that, drop it in the comments or hey, even better Come on over to the server. I updated my server list, by the way, uh, the server invite. Um, I found out that for some odd reason it just stopped working, so I had to redo it. So if you'll see, oh, that way, yeah, that way, yeah. If you look over there, okay, if you look over there, you'll find it. Um, and you can also look in the description and it will also be there too. Drop that into your uh, browser and hit it and it should take you to the Discord's, uh, Discord. If you have Discord, it will automa should automatically log you in and an invite will pop up. But if not, get a hold of me. Hey, right there in the comments and I will talk to anybody. <laughs> All right, so let's go on to Pruitt. Okay, uh, similar to the Sobel algorithm, this filter also handles edge detection. The difference is that the Pruitt algorithm is more sensitive to vertical and horizontal edges. The Sobel, on the other hand, is iso isotropic. It's not based for an, any particular set of directions. So, you can either do horizontal and vertical lines, waviness, okay, you know, the drunken look, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, then you've got, I didn't even do that one up here, I apologize, that was Pruitt, okay. Then you've got grayscale. This filter disc uh, discards the color information of your image, keeping the same lu uh, luminant luminance. So what it does is it turns to the grayscale, so you can do like a black and white uh, cinematic, or or you can have the game go into black and white, you know, or have it in black and white and have certain colors pop up. I know a guy is doing that. He's got an awesome game coming, so you, I might even link that in the description. But he's doing really cool with it. Uh, let's see. Sepia? I'm going to say Sepia. Okay? Only because, you know, it looks like Sepia. Okay? <laughs> this simulates a photograph, photography technique to give a warmer tone for a photo and make it last longer. This effect can set an interesting mood for flashbacks or past scenes in your game. Mmm, flashbacks. Okay, the Sopia effect is uh, is reached by first converting the image into grayscale and then mixing it with a bright desaturated yellow. Okay, 
to you ever play a game, I believe it or one of them it was. I know uh, Assassin's Creed kind of does it, but they don't do it with yellow. Um, I know a couple other games when you look back in time or they reflect back. You know, I remember a time, and then you get that gray, uh, that gray scale, but with a, a little bit different color tint in the back. You know, it makes everything kind of like reddish, yellowish, or something like that, and it kind of makes it uh, look like you're looking back in time. All right, so, all right, so the next one is invert. Everybody knows what invert is. It makes a negative of the frame image. That is white becomes black. What is pure red is converted to uh, cyan, which is blue, like a bluish color, and so on. The inversion is made on top of the RGB values of your scene instead of the HSV, for example. So remember, it's RGB, not HSV. Unfortunately, that can be a hindrance. A filter can be applied on top of any uh, of another one. Okay, so a filter can be applied on top of it, you know, of another filter. In order to combine more than one filter, the filters have to run in a controlled order. Otherwise, the effects may vary, <laughs> vary a lot. Yeah, you put a gray scale and then a, you know, something else in the background of it, it can actually really mess it up. And I've done that on pictures a couple of times. You don't want to do that. Don't do it. Okay. <laughs> All right, to run in the correct order, each filter 2D actuator has to pass, uh, has a pass number. Okay, so if you see right here, pass number. So you can have like four or five of these and have them all with all these different things. Okay, and then it'll be like pass one, pass two, pass three, pass four. Okay, which will determine which runs first by an ascending order. So it's going to be one or zero down to one, or I think it's one to zero. I think it's zero to, you know, down to nine or whatever number you come up with. All right, there are two extra filters that complement the usage of the other ones. Okay, so you get the custom filter. Okay, that's this little guy right here. You can add a script to do it or a MIP map. Okay, this one is more advanced, uh, is a more advanced option that allows you to write your own filters for your own, for your game. There are interesting effects that can be implemented. Depth of field, screen displacement, ambient occlusion, high dynamic range, color balance. I can't even pronounce that one. <laughs> Noise and so on. I, I was, I'm going to say vinaigretting, but it's not. <laughs> the, the netting? Hang on. Let's, let's, let's see if you can get that one. It's this one right here. Okay, let me know in the comments what you think that word is because I don't know what it is and I'm not that much of a picture perfect uh, person to do uh, that type of deal. Okay, so you can add your own color effect scripts right here in GSL, GLSL. You have to use a GLSL shader script. Okay, you can't just write a text document and say, okay, you know, like you do with Python, you've got to have a script for it. Okay. It's still important to be aware the pass number, just as for uh, the other filters. The custom filter can be mixed can be mixed with the others with no problems. Finally, you get to select a text data block to use the uh, filter source. Okay, so let me kick back over here. Hang on just a second. There we go. Okay, so you got to remember the pass order. Okay. And you get your script, and you got MIP map now. I don't think they had that back then because it's not showing. Okay, finally, you can select a text. I already read that. The first is actually a GLSL shader, which is a whole topic on its own. Chapter 5 covers that depth along with other graphic topics. Okay, so if you want to learn a little bit more about GLSL shading, okay, and shaders, uh, check out chapter five we'll, and we'll be doing that one after chapter four after we get finally get done with chapter three okay Let's see we've got motion blur that's this one right here okay in a video camera fast objects appear to be blurred the faster they go it's quite a popular effect and even in real-time rendering it can be simulated in an artistic way and 
a euphysism, 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 I can't say it right, for a trade-off between quality and performance with tons of compromise. Uh, this filter has its own option to be enabled and disabled, as you, as you can see right here. Enable, disable, okay? So you can actually enable it and disable it. It comes enabled automatically, okay? Uh, let's see. There is a no pass, uh, no pass number there. Okay, so that's no pass number. So if you turn it off and then you set your value, or you set your value if you have it enabled. Okay, the reason is that motion blur is always computed before the other filters. Therefore, it will run prior to the first filter of your filters. You can set the value to adjust the sensitivity and general effect of the blur. Small values will produce very little blur. Okay, so a, a 0 0.001 would be very, very low. Okay, now with it off, you notice that that right there grays out. Okay, with it on, you are able to use it. Okay, before they didn't just have that, it was just either on or off. Enable or disable, remove. Okay, so that is these three right here, enable, disable, remove, okay? You can run filter 2D, 2D just like any other actuator. A positive signal will trigger it once and the filter will run. However, the filter will keep running even if the sensor sends some negative signals. If you want to turn a filter temporarily off, you can use the, the disable option, okay? That's this little guy right here, okay? To reactivate the filter, you use Enable, which is this little guy, okay? If, however, you know that you will no longer need this filter during the game, you should use Remove to remove it instead, okay? That's this one right here, Remove Filter. So, you got the drunken filter or the, or the flashback, you want it to go away. You don't want it to come, you know, be like pop up accidentally. You know, that would be kind of funny. You'd be in the middle of the game and you're in the middle of a flashback. You know, not too much fun. Okay. For any of these three options, you have to set the pass number of the filter you want to deal with. Okay. So if you had like a motion blur while you're in a car, okay, because the thing seems to go by fast. So you're going so fast, you know, you got the motion blur going. But when the car stops, you want the motion blur to quit too, right? Because you don't want it to kill, still look like it's passing by at 90 miles an hour. So you want it to stop. So you would actually re remove it or disable it. Okay. Why does Filter 2D not follow the rest of the actuator's behavior? Although it may sound arbitrary, there is a reason behind the enable and disable design of the Filter 2D system. The filters are actually shaders, small programs that must be sent to the graphics card for them to be compiled and, and accessible to the game. To avoid the overhead of recompiling the shaders every time you call them, the game engine keeps them in its memory from the first moment you enable them until you finish the game, remove the filter, or remove the scene where the filter belongs. To remove the object that called uh, well, to remove the object that called the filter 2D will not make the filter stop running. So, uh, if you remove the object, like say the cube had it on it, and you removed it, that's still not going to stop it, and you, you got to find another way to stop it now. Okay. So, that's about where I'm at. We are at. Whew, Made it up to 30 minutes on this one. So <laughs> let's go ahead and close these out. We're going to go ahead and switch. Nope, over to here. We're going to leave off and we're going to start off with game next week. So with that being said, I hope you have a great 2023 and I hope to see you next week.